Great. Perfect. All right, I think, uh, Amanda, if you, you want mind kind of teeing things up just a little bit, then uh, we'll hand it over to David. I, I don't think David can see the screen right now, but what Amanda's showing is the uh, insuring agreement, and we've got that up, uh, you know, I think, as, as a way to you know, kind of introduce it, have a little bit of a visual. But um, Amanda, why don't, you, why don't you kick us off and, and hand, it over to, hand it over to David here as we sure. talk through it. Yeah, so we have several new people in the sales department, and we wanted to just get a basic overview again of the EquiGuard product, the policy, and allow anybody to ask any questions that they have. Um, I think I in particular had one thing I wanted to verify, but David, if you could just give us kind of a, an overview of what EquiGuard is, what the lender receives, and then the basic main points of the insurance around it. Okay, I'll be I'll be fine. This is a good. This is we we should do this over a couple of years anyway, just so you know new people know what we're doing and and why and how it works. But basically, Equiguard is the name of a product that uh, Landmark American uh, developed in the late '90s, and I co-opted it. Also co-opted it for my agency. It's called the Equiguard Agency. I have it registered it or tra I don't have a trademark but uh, I'm the only one that use that uses that name there's other companies Southwest Business and uh, Group 9 and uh, a couple of others that have a similar uh, First American also had a similar product and they have equity uh, or, or some version of it in the name of the product but our product is um, probably the longest running program in its in its same form that is is out there and what equiguard is is equiguard is an insurance policy that basically insures a lender against any loss due to an unknown superior lien that is on the property at the time the loan is made and it works by basically it does not guarantee clear title to the property so it is not title insurance it cannot be sold as title insurance it cannot be sold as title replacement insurance you will have the american land title association come right down your throat uh, we've had three lawsuits over this in the mid 2000s and 2005 2007 and 2009 that basically the American Land Title Association tried to force this product to be declared as title insurance and they failed uh, the ruling from the federal court and the state court in California was that this product um, the, the rules and regulations and enforcement of how this product is administered is left up to the individual states and as of this recording today, Oklahoma is the only state that requires that if you are domiciled in Oklahoma and write this product, it has to be written under the, the rules and regulations as title insurance for that state. Every other state pretty much um, will accept it uh, as a lien protection product which is not title insurance it's a it's more like a mortgage impairment or an errors and omissions product and in fact um we've been working on for the last two years and are still working on getting this as an admitted product as opposed to a surplus lines product um as an errors and omissions product um but EquiGuard has been around since the late 90s. Um, I've been riding it since 2001. I've been riding with First Close since 2003. And we, we've been with our current uh, insurer, Ironshore, since 2009. And it's an AM Best 7 rating. Uh, Ironshore is now part of Liberty Mutual. So it's... Uh, uh, the parent company's uh, A plus 15, 
And uh, we, we have no problem. The Federal Home Loan Bank in Atlanta uh, and Duluth uh, have both approved it. Um, and we can meet those issues if they ever crop up with, with other federal home loan banks. But that's the history. Uh, what the product is, is an insurance policy where the, the lender can go out and do a second mortgage or they can do a refinance. They cannot do a purchase money first with this program because that, that does require title insurance and is therefore ineligible. But the lender can do a second mortgage type product, whether it be a HELOC, uh, home improvement, whatever they call their, their program. And they can write this coverage to cover them in the event that the loan defaults and during the, the loss mitigation process, the default process that they have, they discover that they are, in fact, not in second position, that they are in third or fourth position due to the fact that there is a lien that is clouding title ahead of them that has a superior position to them that they were not aware of at the time they made the loan. And historically, lenders would go out and order a title search for 75 to $200 to see what was on title at the time they were making the loan. And a title search would give them a, a picture that day that it was run of what was on title on the prop on the collateral and they would pay for that and then the loan would fund two days to 30 days later and that was that was that was the, the, the process this product was developed so that instead of in lieu of doing a title search they write this insurance policy so that in the event there is a default on the loan and in the event there is a lien ahead of them that was unknown to them, they are covered against the loss from that superior lien. Um, we do not guarantee to give them clear title to the property and the loss settlement provisions are one of, of, of three options. We can pay the loan balance, we can pay the cost to remove the superior lien, or we can pay some negotiated settlement uh, somewhere in between those numbers, depending on the situation. And I, I don't, we don't have enough time on this call to go into all of the situations that, that result in some type of negotiated settlement. But I can say that every, every claim that has been paid has been uh, has met the satisfaction of the lender to to get to the point where they're they're happy with how it was handled. Um, hey David, 90, good question. Um, you said up to the loan amount. Is there is there a, a limit on the loan amount? Yes, the the loan amount? amount is limited by. Yeah, we use current GSE guidelines, so I think the current loan amount you can do this is five hundred thousand dollars. Okay, and, the, and the maximum term, the maximum ter loan term is 30 years. And the minimum FICO score that's acceptable across the board is 600. Mm -hmm. And the maximum loan to value at the time the loan is made is 90%. Now, having said that, if, if a lender has a loan that does not meet those minimum requirements. And I get a lot of credit unions that have members that have less than 600 uh, on their, their FICO score, but for other reasons, uh, the amount of assets they, they hold, uh, the, the period of time they've been with the credit union, um, so forth and so on, the credit union will want to make this loan. And you simply send me the, the request. We do these manually, one off, because I literally get about 15 of these a year. So I don't want to set the standard, you know, that we'll take a FICO score of 520 when I only get a handful below 600 as it is. I've never turned one down because every single exception has been made with a very justifiable basis. The, 
the, the borrower has gone through a divorce or has had medical issues or something has, has caused his FICO score to drop. But as a borrower, he has been a very loyal and good client of the lender. Um, same thing applies if they want to go over the 90% LTV. Um, also, on the term, it's 30 years, but we get a lot of lenders that do uh, uh, revolving lines of credit that have a 15-year term that they can renegotiate. Um, and our stance on that is if a loan is renegotiated under the same loan number, the coverage will apply for the full 30 years. If any type of loan is redone that, it, that results in issuing a new loan number, they have to order a new policy. Hey, Amanda, and, hey, could, you, could you scroll down on, on the, uh, you're showing the, uh, the insuring agreement. I think there are some of the parameters that David is discussing is, is in the insuring agreement. Uh, unless, correct me if I'm wrong, David, are, are some of the loan amount limits on the FICOs in, in that insuring agreement? They're, they're on the deck page, Ted. On the deck page, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I don't have that. I don't think I have that, Ted. Yeah, okay. I can. Yeah, David. You, you have deck. You, can, you have you deck, deck pages deck. for every client. So, if you don't have those somewhere, I can send those to you. Well, we we need need okay, a kind of a generic kind of a generic one for the uh, <laughs> the sales group to be able to kind of talk off. Oh, of absolutely. It. Yeah. Yeah, I'll get you that. Okay. And uh, then you can pick one quick question. You had mentioned that Equigard is not currently uh, deemed a, as ENO. I uh, so it, what what is it deemed as if it's not an errors and emissions insurance policy? It's a it's a what? It's an, it's 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 it, de it, it depends on the jurisdiction or by the state, but in most in most states it's considered mortgage impairment. Mm, okay, and so my Which, follow up question on that: if it's if it's not considered E and O, so uh, and you had mentioned that it, it covers the lenders uh, if, if there's a superior lien that they they did not know about or were not aware of when when they closed the loan. Uh, one of the things we have had some internal discussions as to whether or not the Equigard policy, when when a lender is using it, if if they need a legal investing um, or LNV um, last best of deed report. Uh, right now, I believe uh, one of our newer customers, Desert, uh, is yeah, and, and they they've been an Equigard customer for you know quite some time. But if they they do not get a legal investing report or an LVD or you know LNV from us. I uh, do they do they have to get one? No. Okay. Most, most of the, most of my competitors have changed the policy language so that some type of legal investing, you, you, you really almost have to do a title search with a full legal investing before this policy kicks in with most of my uh, competitors' policies, which yeah. makes this redundant and almost uh, useless. Yeah. The, the purpose, the purpose of this product is to cover the lender against an unknown superior lien that they would or should have known about had they done a search. So forcing them to do a search or get full legal investing is uh, is redundant. So all they, they have get that signed affidavit by the borrower. Yes. Okay. Or borrowers, as the case may be, but. Um, some some accounts have used this in conjunction with a mortgage loan report um, that does have legal investing, I believe. So it's been there's been some confusion as to what's actually required, but there is not a legal investing requirement. Um, we will get we need the legal description, which we can get, but we can do that on on a claims basis, not up front. Um, most of what we need. Uh, from the borrower, I mean, from the lender in, in the event of a claims 
is uh, we just need to make we, we verify coverage is in place that the loan was premium was charged and paid for it, which we can do through your system, and then we verify the affidavit, we verify the conditions and the situation and what caused the loss and whether there is a superior lien and whether the superior lien is valid and if the superior lien impairs the lender from collecting any of the monies owed to them. Um, and the term impairment is used as opposed to loss, which has caused uh, some jurisdictions to call this a mortgage impairment policy. But the, for the, the true spirit of the policy is, is it's an errors and omissions policy because the, the error made up front is not finding out about the superior lien, and that's what's covered. Um, but uh, just a side note, the product was developed by Robin O'Rourke at Desert Schools, which is now Desert Financial, and he wanted a product where he could literally close a loan the same day the application was taken. And the title search took uh, two to five days at that point in time. But um, you do not requ we do not require it. Um, the terms are in the deck page, which I'll send you a blank one. Um, an authorized representative on your end can sign the deck page. We've already gone through that. So you have somebody in the office that signs it as an authorized representative of the Equigard agency. And um, the rest of it is administered on, on, on the claim side when there is a claim. And the, the, the issue we've had over the years, and uh, Ted, I'll, I'll just tell you straight up, the biggest issue we had was that Bill Smith at Member Close sold this as a cure-all to the, the credit unions that you just pay for this, and if you, if your loan goes into default, they'll cover it. Oh, God. And it was, it, it was sold as bad loan insurance, and we had hundreds of claims come in that had no issue with a superior lien that were denied that all of a sudden, you know, Bill and Bob were getting in trouble at member clause over misrepresenting the product, but um, I, we actually paid a couple of claims for them to uh, to resolve a, a huge E and O issue that they would have had on their policy as an agency, but didn't work out for us anyway. They went away, but um, the 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 big the, the biggest issue is this is not bad loan insurance. This this covers against a superior unknown lien. And that lien has to impair the lender's ability to collect. And what that means is if uh, Desert Financial, for example, loans $100,000 to a member on a property as a second mortgage, and the property has a $200,000 first, so now there's $300,000 loaned against the property, it's worth $450,000, but uh, due to a bad economy, job loss, hyper uh, recession type issues, the, the loan goes into default. The property is worth $150,000 <laughs> at, at the time of foreclosure. Well, there's not any payment. If, if there's 15 mechanic liens between Desert Financial and the first, uh, they're still not going to get paid because the property's value won't even satisfy the first mortgage, much less the second or any of those other liens, which is a credit loss, which is a risk that every lender takes when they make a loan. Um, you don't see it in, you don't see it around here near as much as you see it in California um, and on the coast where property values fluctuate at a much greater percentage than they do uh, in the rest of the country. But we have seen it. Um, we, we've had properties that drop so much in value, there is no recovery and we're not going to pay uh, simply because there's an unknown lien. That lien has to be the prim primary cause of loss to our lender. David, if there was if there was enough value in in the home, and the the first gets paid, and the the second gets paid, 
but the lender thought they were in second and they, they really right. in, in third, then as long as the value is there and, and, and both of those got paid, then they can prove that they, yeah. they suffered the loss, right? Yeah. What, what, yeah, and exa- and that's a good example, Ted, because whatever was paid to that the the whoever was in a, actually in second position, which is what our lender would have collected had they been in second position. Yeah. That amount is what we will pay them because that's the amount that they've been impaired. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. That right. makes sense. Which that brings a lot of lenders have that question. Well, why am I not getting my full balance paid off? Well. If the if you loaned a hundred, the first had two hundred. Uh, there was a, a unknown lien a, a ahead of you for forty, and the uh, the properties foreclosed and sold for two hundred and fifty. Well, the first gets two hundred, the second gets forty. Our client, the lender, gets ten, and then they get another fifty from us because they would have got the full fifty thousand that the property sold for above and beyond the first had they been in second position. Yeah. Now, one 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 thing you mentioned uh, earlier was the uh, mortgage loan reports, and you know we we don't really sell a lot of that uh, anymore. We really don't sell any of it. Uh, just Joe, for your edification, and and Martha. I think Amanda may know it, but uh, a mortgage loan report is, is a credit-based lien report that would basically take the the information from the credit bureau as relates to the liens that, that they're seeing uh, current mortgages, and it would put it on a report. And then we, uh, in, in some cases, we would put Equigard insurance on top of that, but then it's not really necessary because the the lender is pulling credit anyway. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be in a report to ensure any kind of report. What what David is saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, David, but the Equigard insurance is you know, stands on its on its own separate yeah. and apart. They pull credit if, if for some reason they close on that loan and they didn't they didn't know a certain lien existed. They're they're going to pull credit. They're going to do all these things to you know, guard against it. The only thing they're not going to do in this instance is, is do a title search. And that's where Dave is saying that it would be redundant to do so. The Equigard takes place of that, but doesn't take place of credit. They're still going to pull credit. They're still going to do their, right. their all their other underwriting, you yeah. know, guidelines and criteria. They're just not going to do a legal investing and a full property report or title search because to David's point, it would be redundant because the insurance does cover that. Well, Ted, Ted, this is Joe. Is that right, David. Um, and and just to be clear, just to be clear, for example, um, you know, uh, some lenders, based upon their matrix that we're leveraging for automated ordering, have said that oh, if it's above eighty percent LTV and above two hundred and fifty thousand, we require a full title. Right. Now that's their own risk guidelines. According to David, he doesn't think that you don't you don't need that. Um, you can just slap on an equity card. But 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 their own internal policies say that that's what they want, and they they believe that that's what their risk guidelines are. But if they really knew the inside workings of Equigard, they could actually change those policies. Yeah, they could. Right. Yeah. So so just because that's absolutely you, correct. Yeah, so so just for Martha's edification, everybody else that's on this call, is that that may be their underwriting guidelines today, but the chief risk officer could eliminate additional processing time and eliminate additional costs by slapping on an Equigard product and being insured the whole time. Absolutely. We 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 don't want to we do not want to influence or change the internal underwriting guidelines of any client. But they are more than welcome to raise their limits, their LTVs, lower their minimum FICO score to our minimums if they want to increase their lending footprint. Mm -hmm. But that's an internal decision. We don't have any influence. We just tell them, you're still covered if you do that. David, I have a question for you related to a scenario. What if the scenario is a home improvement lien? where the current loan to value prior to the improvements being done 
is going to result in a CLTV of 100% loan to value, but soon as the new subject to appraisal or once the home has been remodeled and done, it's now back underneath 90 LTV. How do you get around those issues? Just go ahead and do the loan. And um, if, the, if the lender is making the loan on, on the assumption that the value after completion of the home improvement project will result in the loan to value dropping back to their accepted level, uh, we're fine with that. Okay, great. So that's awesome. So that's good to know. Yeah. So, so yeah. no issues related to that. It's their underwriting guidelines that said, hey, basically, we're taking a subject to value on this one. We know they're, right. you know, they're acquiring this thing as now, now. Now, do you only do these for owner occupied, David, or do you also do them for non owners and second homes? Yeah, we do non owners. We do second homes. We do investors. We do small commercial. Uh, we can do just about anything that uh, we have different limits on what we pay. Um, the uh, commercial loans that we're doing uh, right now are small commercial um, second mortgages, but we have a uh, $50,000 maximum uh, loan amount for those at the moment. And then uh, as far as uh, non-owner occupied or second homes, we have no restrictions on those. They can fall under the uh, same uh, limits and uh, guidelines as owner occupied. Great. That's awesome. That's awesome. So the, why wouldn't a fix and flip lender want to, want to do this? I mean, if I'm a fix and flip guy, I don't want to get title. I just want to do EquiGuard because I want to get it done quicker because I know when I go to resell the home, that will be the buyer's choice if they want to buy title insurance or not. So, uh, you know, We've looked at that. The problem with fix and flip is the lenders that specialize in fix and flip can do the loan and turn it around in about three days. Um, and they're nearly all in first position. So nearly right. all of them require title. Um, if somebody was going to do an investor program on seconds, we'd be happy to look at it. Uh, but since that's out of our normal lender footprint, which is banks and credit unions, uh, we'd have to have a review and approve, approval process for it. But I'm not saying we can't do it. It just takes us some time. Yeah, we, we, we have a, we have a one particular um, entity that their underwriting guidelines say that they'll do a non-owner occupied purchase at a 70% LTV first, a CLTV of 90% for non-owners. Well, the, the problem there is we cannot do a purchase money loan. Right, 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 right. Right, you're right about that. I have, I, you told yeah. me that. Uh, the first thing you told yeah. us, actually. Refinance, yeah. second mortgage only. Okay, I get it. Well, yeah. Uh, um, Joe, uh, what, I, what I'm thinking, and, and Amanda, I, you may have some insight into this too, but one one customer we're struggling with, I think, in in COVID, and you know, for for other reasons, uh, with a, a company that uh, gets uh, an insured L and V, uh, and a uh, property report with with E and L on it uh, from from the old uh, USS uh, in, and now now named Impact. Uh, the, this lender is. We may, may need to tee up a conversation with David and this lender because what, what's happening, you know, my understanding is, you know, COVID and, and other other things um, affecting, you know, turn times and and I uh, I'm not sure if there's accuracy issues or all the issues going on, but they're they're looking for some alternatives to to doing the insured LNV and, and or the um, property report with the with the ENO so. Uh, David, we may may get you on a phone call. We're under NDA, um, and you know you're you're our uh, you know kind of obviously the, from an insurance perspective, you're representing Equigard, and but Eastern Bank is is a, is a company I'm talking about that we may want to invite you okay. into a conversation with them to see if this this might be a 
a potential solution for them. Yeah, I'll be happy to jump on. Just let me know. Yeah, David, Natalie, and those guys should definitely speak with David, and they should talk about that for sure. Um, that's a good call there, Ted. Yeah. Okay, well, I, right. I think I'll I got anything else you wanted to cover, David? No, that's basically it. All right. Well, I thank you for your time. Need. Y'all email me anytime or call me. This most of you have my cell. Um, if you don't, it's I'll give it to you. And uh, if you have a quick question, I, somebody called me, uh, Natalie, or someone called me last week. They were on a call and they had a question. And you know, I'm I'm happy to help anytime I can. Yeah, I'll send your contact information out to everybody on this call, David. Okay, that'd be great. And thank you again so much. All right, y'all yeah. have a great day. Have a great weekend. You too. All right, take care, David. Bye. Bye. Goodbye. Bye, Bye. David.